Hello everyone and welcome to another stream. My name is Luciano and with me there is Roberto. And Hello. today, today as usual, we are going to learn a little bit of Rust and we are working on a project. I don't know if you follow the latest stream, but we started a new project where we are using Rust in combination with AWS Lambda. So last time what we did was basically started to work on a Lambda written in Rust. Roberto is going to give you a little bit more details in a second. But what we achieved was basically all the scaffolding around understanding what is the tooling ecosystem, different tools that we used. We use Cargo Lambda, we use AWS SAM in combination to build, test locally, define the infrastructure as code, and deploy our first Lambda. This Lambda is a Lambda that runs on a schedule. So it's basically going to be automatically invoked on a specific frequency that we can define. And then uh, it will run some code. Now, we haven't written any business logic. So today, we're probably going to work more on the actual Rust business logic for this Lambda, deploy it a few times, try it out, and see what happens. So with that being said, I'm going to give it to Roberto in case he wants to share a screen and explain again what is the goal of this particular Lambda. I'm not sharing my screen. No, I am. I think you are now. Let me try to share it again then. OK, so last time. Uh, we did all the scaffolding, like Luciano said. What are we trying to do? What we are trying to do is simple, is a simple Lambda. There is a restaurant. This restaurant has a menu. Every item in the menu has a list of tags. But we want to synchronize them to a second table that only contains the tags, because the tags needs to be sorted in a specific order. Why this? Because there is an Android application that is reading these tables through a, a table and is presenting the menu to select the dishes with this sort order that is defined in this table. So here, our table is the back end for the front end, and the front end is this Android application. So you can see here that we have the tags, 20 tags. Uh, OK, spaghetti is duplicated, but who cares? And their sort order. Uh, this sort order is the one used in the application to create the menus, the buttons that the operator are touching. And uh, here, the operator is also able to create the new dishes, uh, enable, disable, and do stuff around the existing ones. This already works with the Python prototype that we have uh, here. Tell me if I need to make the font bigger. Um, maybe a couple of points. Like this? That looks good to me. But chat, let us know if, if that's still too small. For me, this is good. OK, cool. So let's skip this one. So like I was saying, we already have a prototype written in uh, Python. What is doing? We have two URL, one for the menu, one for the tag table. The first loop is around the menu table, and we are taking all the items. We have an offset, because uh, our tables give you only 100 elements per request, uh, but the number of dishes is more than 100, so we need to loop through them. In the first request, there will be an offset to do the second request and so on to do the next request. In the last page, there will be no offset. So you know that you are at the end of this loop when offset is not there. So in our mm -hmm. Rust code, it should be an optional string, basically. And we create uh, this records list with all the records from the uh, calls. Then we loop and we get also all the tags. In the tags, we do the same logic of offset, even if the tags are less than 100. So in theory, we don't need to support the offset. But this was just to keep the code consistent. Mm -hmm. Then what we do is we loop through all the tags. We ask, we check if the tag is not already present. If it's already present, we do nothing. If the tag is missing, we create the tag as the last tag in the table. So we take the maximum sort order that we found and we add 10. And we create through this structure, that is records of fields and so on. So this is a structure that we should map in Rust in a type. And we do a post this time to the same URL of the tag table, but with this payload. And that creates a row. OK, so we have to redo this in Rust. Notice that here we have line 6, a secret that is the only um, token that we should pass to be able to authenticate against these tables. Because if you don't pass this one, you can't even read them. We can try this from the console. So here we have a curl that is giving us the first page of the menu table. You see, we have offset that tells us what's the next table. 
the next uh, page, sorry. And here we have all the items, mm -hmm. all the dishes, but we only care about tags. But if we have to serialize them, we need to create a structure that can map all of them or do something with shared. And if we are able to arrive to the top of this, you have a records key. If we don't provide the authentication, even if we do a get here, so here we're just reading, what we get back is an authentication error. So Makes it sense. needs to pass to our Lambda the authentication token that now is an environment variable in my machine that I hope to not show you at in any moment of this stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there might be an easy way to do that. Well, I don't know if it's easy, but there might be a way, which is uh, in our sum code. We okay. uh, then uh, we jump in the sum configuration. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the, so, sorry, the sum uh, template, template YAML. Sorry, so is this one? Yeah, so in the template YAML, what we can do, uh, I guess at the same level of globals and resources, we could create a section called parameters. So inside this? No, at the same level of globals and resources, so very top level. Ah, very top level, sorry. So these are like stack parameters. So in general, this is when you're trying to build um, a stack that can be reusable. Maybe you want to deploy it multiple times and every time with a different configuration. And uh, you can, it's like the same stuff as cloud formation parameters, effectively. It's even the same syntax. And one thing you can do, you can basically say, we can give it a name to a new parameter, for instance, Airtable API key, something like that. And then you can say type string, you can give it a description. You don't need to give it a default. And then we are going to mm -hmm. reference okay. that in the function as an environment variable. Okay. So, so this is what uh, I think a code whispers because I was playing around with multiple of these uh, mm -hmm. AI tool for code. So I think this is code whisper that is uh, suggesting me stuff. So let's accept what he was saying. So you were telling, let's call this instead of environment. Yeah, let's call it API key or air table API key, something like that. I have table API key. I, have, I forgot an R. I have table API key is a string without a default, without exactly. a list of all of values. And if you want, I you can give a, a description that is the I have table API key taken from. Okay. Go on your drive. Okay. The I have table API key. Cool. Okay, so now what you can do is in the Lambda itself, so the sync tags Lambda in the definition there, we can add another section called, uh, I guess, environment, I believe, at the same level of events. Yeah. Events, no, what is events? It's, in, it's inside, inside properties, properties. And then it's yes. called okay, environment, sorry. I Just... think. Mm. I have no idea what okay. Copilot is doing there. Okay, variables, and that's correct. Airtable API key, reference Airtable mm -hmm. API key. So what this basically means is that we are saying when you deploy this Lambda, the Air Cloud formation, there is an environment variable we want to provide to this Lambda, and the value for that environment variable is not a statically encoded string, but it's a reference to something else that exists in the stack. And we can reference a parameter, which basically means that when we deploy, we need to populate that parameter and mm -hmm. it will automatically inject the value of that parameter as the value for the environment. Parameter. Okay. Cool. So there, there is a little bit of And then we have to read. Yeah. Then in our year, we need to somehow read the. Yes. This here we can do OS, OS.env uh, and read the environment variable. Yeah. yeah let's uh, leave a comment here to remember to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we need to read this through OS environment, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, and we need to call with some kind of HTTP client uh, their table table to do a get. So we need a request. I think we want to use. Yeah. Do you want to try before to do a deployment just to see if it asks you for the parameter? Because there is a specific okay. syntax where we can provide the parameter value. I think it's called parameter override. Is the font big enough like this? 
Yeah, that's good for me. But again, chat, let us know if it is too small. Chat, okay. Anyway, sun validate, build and deploy. Last time we were forgetting to build. Whoops. Okay, the Yamen. Do mm -hmm. you want uh, yes? I want to cargo lambda is a beta feature. Yeah, you can add the dash dash beta feature in uh, in the sun build if in you my don't want to be bothered. Yeah. In my trio of comments, yes, next time. Okay, Roberto Deb is saying that he has a huge screen, so it is okay for him. But yeah, everyone else, if it is too small, we can make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> Doing something. So meanwhile, I can okay, give build you... Okay, succeeded. Now I'm curious to see if the deploy fails or if it asks interactively for yeah, the Yeah, failed to create a change set, an error occurred when validating exactly. parameter, a parameter is I stable API key, it must have a value. Fade. Okay, so. so I'll give you the. We must provide that at build time. We need to provide that at deployment time. So I don't know if you can see here deployment, in the chat. Okay. It's basically some deploy dash dash parameter dash overrides. And then you can do a space quotes, and uh, what did we call it? Air table API key equal. For now, just put something random like an X or something, so we can check then in the console that we are getting that value injected. Okay. Do we also want then to already change the code, read the value, and do a debug of it? Yes. Let's do that. So you need to import. Uh, uh, I, yeah, okay, that's, that's the correct one, stdm var, and this one it gives God, you back. It wrote, it wrote everything, come on. It's correct, it. <laughs> yeah, it looks correct at least. I added a comment and uh, whoop, the code. The interesting thing there is that an environment variable might fail because you don't necessarily have that environment variable set up, right? From the yeah. programming language perspective, it's an optional thing, it can be there or not. Now, I don't remember if Rust gives you a result or an optional, but basically we need to unwrap that value to, to get mm -hmm. the actual value if it's there. And we are unwrapping with accept, expect, sorry. Expect yes. which basically fails with a nicer error message. If you just do unwrap, unwrap just panic saying cannot unwrap, sorry. Okay, so back to our console. Now, validate, build the beta features, deploy with that parameter that say random. Okay. And now, hopefully, we should be able to do a deployment. I could disappear for a while during the compilation. So far, it's not so bad. So let's see what happens. I think the binary was cached from last time. Yeah, probably it's doing some kind of incremental build. Now it's changed. It's something start should be fast enough no, 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 no. okay build is done deploy okay validation error parameter i table api key is missing now did you spell it correct oh ah, there is an api with a y yeah yeah my fault sorry That's... okay this time okay. hopefully the build I is could have done only the deploy would have done just over the deployment, sorry. But like you said, the build was faster this time because. Okay. It's going to create a role, a permission, a rule, a function. Yes, we are happy. Looks legit. creation in progress. I have somewhere also my console open here. And if we go to Lambda, are we going to see any Lambda? Not yet, still too early. You can probably go to cloud formation if you want to see the, I mean, you're going to see more or less the same stuff you see in your console. 
but it's a little bit more visual there. Creation in progress. Okay. So it's creating. Yeah, last time we, we, we deleted the entire stack. So now it's taking a little bit longer to do the deployment because we, it's recreating everything from scratch. But if after the first deployment, then it should be a little bit faster to, to do new deployments. Yeah, but sorry, guys, it costs money. <laughs> <laughs> well, in theory, serverless, if you're not involved, oh, yeah, because it's on a schedule, so it's going to keep running. Yeah, it was running uh, every 30 minutes, so it's not a big run, but it's still uh, something. So still in progress, a bunch of stuff, like, for example, the rule, the trigger here, we don't see the trigger yet. Yeah, that's probably something that is being created. Yes, it was creation in progress. Now we see the trigger here. So it's okay. going on ah, because it's done in theory. So, so we can run this manually. And uh, I forgot test, right? And here we have test, correct? Mm -hmm. And you can just execution run Execution succeeded. And uh, this random, our Airtable API key, random. Perfect, here. OK. I don't now, know if you can see. If you go to, yeah, I can see that. Maybe it's a bit small, but I trust you. Yeah, but trust us is, is correct. The other way you can see that, if you go on the configuration tab uh, there on, on the Lambda page and you go to environments, you should see the value. Random. Mm, okay. Yeah. So this is not the best way to store secrets. That's what I wanted to mention. Yeah, good one. There are other ways, for instance, I guess there are a couple of problems here. The first one is that you need to have that knowledge of that particular API key at deployment time, which you don't necessarily have, right? Now you are deploying from your own machine mm -hmm. and you saved yeah. that value in an environment variable. You need to make sure that every time you deploy, you have that environment variable correctly populated, right? And that you are passing that parameter correctly, which is not convenient. The other problem is that when it gets deployed, you are seeing that in clear text here. So there are a, another couple of options that we can probably skip just for simplicity, but worth knowing for people. Mm -hmm. I think the best one is that you can use KMS. So for instance, if you click on edit here, uh, no, sorry, they're, they're on, um, on the environment variable where you were before. If you click on edit, I think from here we can do encryption configuration. You see that one? So, mm -hmm. Uh, what if you click on add environment variable? Does it allow you to? Okay, yeah. So this one, uh, it's a little bit silly because it's still injecting the variable as clear text into the function. It's just that it's not showing it in the console. So if so... you click there, enable helpers for encryption in transit. Ah, okay. You see, you can encrypt that value. Well, you need to select okay. uh, a key, but this is not really. I mean, I you need can... to create a key first. Yeah. I don't remember exactly if I this one, one is actually encrypting it or it's just in the UI, you don't see it. But anyway, I don't have any key around, so. Okay, now we, I think for now we can keep it simple and we know that there is yes. a flow there and just keep it simple. The other approach, which is probably the most conservative is that you don't pass anything to the Lambda through environment variables. And then when the Lambda bootstraps, you use the KMS client and the Lambda needs to have permission to read a specific secret. And then you read the secret only at boot time. That way you can revoke that permission effectively. And if a new Lambda spins up, it's not going to be able to fetch the secret. Plus, you're not going to see the KMS, secret. Uh, KMS is to encrypt and decrypt. And is a secret manager to keep track of secrets. You can also, yes, you can use secret manager. Sorry, you're right. KMS is only for encryption. So obviously, I don't have any store because it mm -hmm. costs money. And I am I'm cheap. But yes, those are the options that we have. Now we will go for the naive approach of every having the data here in plain test, and they will never go back here again to show you my password. Yes, okay. 
just remember when you deploy the next time to mm -hmm. put the environment variable there, your reference to your local yeah. environment. Yeah. So dollar, whatever okay. you call it. Yeah, yeah, dollar uh, IR table out. But first of all, we need to now add stuff to our Go mm -hmm. code, right? So cargo add back request. request. Yeah, features, which features do we need? We can show the problem. So you can just do. Mm, OK. Yeah, just do that install. And then let's import request and let's do a simple request. So you can do request uh, column column get. Sorry, I'm fighting with uh, the internationalization. What we get? What um, is your website? Loig.co without www, even though it should work anyway. Like this? Yeah, and now you have to do a wait. I probably also have to import the request, but... Uh, no, because you are just using the... Um, that way it should work. Now you can do let... Um, actually, if you want to get the HTML, this is just going to be the response. Then if you want to get the HTML, you have to do resp.body.await, I think. You don't, uh, you can't, uh, what were you saying? Resp. Dot, dot send. Dot, uh, actually, either bytes or text, I think. Try to do dot text. Yeah, then dot await again. And the reason why there are two awaits here, which might be a little bit weird, depending on the type of clients you have used, because the request is not an eager HTTP client. So the first the first await is basically doing the request itself and waiting for the headers of the response. So the only thing you get is what is the status code? And it might even fail to do that, for instance, if it's not able to connect or resolve the DNS or something like that. Then you can decide, okay, do I want to consume the body and how to consume the body? The body, you can consume it as bytes, as text. We will see that we can also enable a feature called Serdi, so we can even try to process it as a JSON, which we probably have to mm -hmm. do at some point. So the second way it is basically streaming the rest of the request. So it's consuming all the body using the specific method that you decided, in this case, just as text. Yeah. Then it will go on reading from the socket, so you have to await the read from the socket of the body of the request that you just did. Mm -hmm. So, okay. okay. Okay, now if you try to do some build, we sense. should see a problem. In the meantime, I started on. Is doing the build is silent, the build is not verbose. There is a way, yeah, build failed. Here okay. it failed at. Why? That's what we expect. At uh, open SSL, SSL. Because okay. for this architecture, it's not able to compile. Exactly. So the problem here in simple terms is basically that we are trying to cross compile our Lambda for the specific architecture we have in AWS, which is Linux, uh, Gravitron, so ARM64, which is not necessarily the same architecture you have here in your machine. So it's using... Uh, no, because this is an Intel machine. Mm -hmm. So it's using some magic there. I think it also involves Zig. And in that magic, by default, request is trying to uh, link itself against the system OpenSSL library. And probably didn't find that OpenSSL library installed, so it just fails. Now, there are options here. One would be to make it so that it finds OpenSSL, but it's, it gets tricky because it really depends on the system where you are building. The other approach, which is a little bit simpler, is that we can use Rust TLS, which is an implementation of TLS written in Rust. And to do that, we need to enable that feature here in um, request. And let me get the exact syntax. Uh, 
uh, the feature I think is Rust TLS dash TLS. Let me just confirm that. Okay, that's that's the full syntax. I'm gonna post it here in the chat as well. Okay, there is also you also need um, to disable the default features. Default dash features with this false and features rust rust TLS yes. TLS rust yeah, TLS TLS, twice TLS for some reason. Okay, now if you do another okay. cargo build or some build, this time it should work. There is a way to have the build variables so we can see car we can see cargo building. Actually, I don't know that. So okay. Some build. No, some build. Dash the help. No, that was not help. Yeah, I guess the other I mean, way, yes. if you want to see it, you can do cargo lambda. Build. Oh god. Any variables here? No. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not aware of that. The other approach is that you can do cargo lambda build. Late. Okay, template we didn't touch it, so probably this time we keep validating it. Not that it's taking a lot, but if we don't touch it, it's useless. Now it's building uh, before it failed here. Let's see mm -hmm. if this time we go through. Now, if everything works, we when you run the lambda. Building. Yeah, when, when we deploy the lambda, we should see the HTML. Mm -hmm. Yes, we run it once and we should see the HTML. Still, it's building, but it's using less CPU than last time. So, Probably for this reason, I'm not uh, frozen. Interesting. Again, maybe it's just because it's an incremental build, so it's uh, less demanding. Yeah, it's probably not building everything, everything, just a request that is the new cargo created that we installed. Okay, now you're getting frozen. Okay. You can tell a joke. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm going to share, rather than telling a joke, I'm going to share the docs for request because I think at some point we will need it to see, for instance, how to integrate JSON, which is going to be convenient because we expect responses to be JSON. We can create our own structs that are something we can populate directly from JSON. At that point, what we can do is rather than saying dot text, we can just say dot JSON. And depending on the type we expect for that variable, it's going to automatically try to deserialize to that variable. Is modifying permission, rules, and fact. Why modifying the rules? Because you are basically publishing a new version of the Lambda, which means that the ah, rule okay. also needs to be updated to point to the new version. And I think permissions probably for the same reason. Hmm. OK. Successful. So this time was faster. Let's uh, go in the console and take a look. The lambda is still called the same. Seems so. Should be called the same, yeah. Now you should now, see a bunch of we'll, HTML. Uh, we will see one day. Did event. you write the bug of the? I think I wrote the bug if I'm not drunk. Let HTML the bug HTML, correct? Yeah. Interesting. It looks correct. Yeah. What we have here? Oh my God, CloudWatch is so slow. <laughs> okay, you'll get that so eventually. So slow that is 
painful. Okay, near you should have HTML so, equals something. Oh, here, okay, it was just truncated because in uh, the Lambda started with event equal, and map mm -hmm. we are. So probably the log was too long for the test there. Yeah, yeah I think and there is a limit. There is a limit for log yeah. uh, sizes. So mm -hmm. if it's too big, HTML it's equal. Truncated. Cool, sounds in line good. 16, so this is our line that we logged. So it was not drunk. It's just that here is truncating. And if you want to see all the logs, you have to go to CloudWatch and suffer. Mm -hmm. OK, so we are able to make requests. We are able to have our Airtable API key. Now we just need to uh, put these two stuff together and get all the menu. And then mm -hmm. we can do a debug of all the menu that we download. OK, so let uh, menu equal, we can create a function. This is giving back uh, what uh, a vector, and now we have to do a vector of something. Exactly. Menu item, let's call it. Now we have mm -hmm. to define it. So for now, you can just put a to do there in the in the body just to avoid complaints. To do exclamation mark and parentheses, yeah, uh, without the semicolon. In the semicolon. No, because you're basically saying. In this to do, this is my return type. So I shouldn't complain. It basically, that macro, I think, does some magic creating some fake menu item, which right now you don't have. So we need to do struct menu item. Mm -hmm. Struct menu item. But we need to go in the console and look what kind of structure do we need, correct? Correct. So let's take the add. Let's say the first 20 lines should be enough. They were just enough. So a single menu item is this guy here that has mm -hmm. an ID. OK, so also it's at this point also. Yeah. And if there is stuff you don't care to deserialize, we can just keep it. Mm -hmm. uh, so square brackets derive. Uh, he derived an order. I don't know where uh, could whisper took the order. Yeah, <laughs> serial, but we need to install self. This No, what is this? Go home, please. Uh, mind your business. Serd <laughs> uh, is already installed. Yes, Serd JSON is already installed. But you also so need to install Serd itself. So you need to do cargo add Serd. Ah, because there is only serve the JSON. Yeah, because we use that only for the raw value thing. So the difference is that serve itself is kind of a lower level abstraction that gives you these macros to do serialize and deserialize implementation automatically, while serve the JSON is like the specific implementation for JSON serialization and deserialization. So I think that something the tells me that they are not here. No, they are inside Serdi itself. That's why you need Serdi. Ah, okay. Okay. Happy. That should be happy. So you were saying we can deserialize only what we need. So we need, to be honest, only the tags. Okay, we need to create another struct for that because you cannot nest uh, types. Menu item fields. I like the suggestion for the name. Do you like it? Uh, is it all fields or is it just the tags? Name, tags, price, price takeaway. Oh, and then it's called fields. Not, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then you can put because in table those are all the fields that are not. Uh, uh, the one that a table provides on its own, they are all the custom fields. Mm -hmm. But we want tags that is a vector of string. And uh, can skip over all the others. Okay. Yes, if you don't need them, yes. I don't think we, no, we don't need that for this specific uh, script. 
probably for other ones we could need it but today so uh the serialized get it uh, now here menu is e get menu of our key and then we have to call and await and then we can do uh we can remove your website if you don't vote if you don't yeah I, if you don't get upset it. because we are not calling your anymore and i say semicolon thank you something called whisper is a little bit getting in the way uh, cool now here what we need to do is to call uh, for now we are called the damn point what do you think mm -hmm. yeah that's fine otherwise you'll need to make that a parameter as well but i don't think it makes for a lot now, of sense start. in this case Let's record it now. What what you want? Stay stay quiet. By the way, another Here thing we want. That, uh, is going to be interesting is that in your function get menu, you are passing the entire ownership of that string, so you're not going to be able to reuse the API key again. So one way to fix that is that rather than using a string, use an str, ampersand str, and then there you just need to pass a reference to a string and it's going to automatically convert it to an str so okay, cool. in, in now the, oh, sorry 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 go back in line two yeah. you, you just need to put a reference in front of the variable name oh you're right perfect okay now another stuff that we forgot is that the records are inside a records key and there is an mm -hmm. optional offset at the end of it Right, so we need to deserialize all of that as well. Good point. Yeah, you see there is an optional offset mm -hmm. at the end of the structure. So we need another struct that is mapping the Airtable response. Let's call it Airtable response, probably more sensible. That is made of records uh, of menu items. And then an optional Vectors. offset. Yeah, that makes sense. And then an offset that is an optional string. Okay, correct. Now it's mm -hmm. complaining. Why? No, it was complaining because it was not saving. So our IR table is equal to request get menu. We need to provide the headers. headers yeah. How Which, do uh, headers? I think we can but use the builder. So if you do request column, column, uh, actually right i don't know if it works that way let, let me check so i think you you need to rather than do a request or get colon colon get i think there is mm -hmm. a re request colon colon build and then it gives you a builder pattern let me check if i remember correctly Why oh no no no, no. Then, no then it's even easier leave the get remove the parameter the second parameter and just close parenthesis and do a dot and do is there headers there okay sorry i'll take that back so we need to do this first <laughs> so we need to create a client okay so first thing we create a client then we can do client dot get and now with this dot you have a builder pattern so you can pass headers i think or header yeah and key and value there you go now copilot is being oh God, what the f almost the... useful almost useful so header that one with the table that we can remove the underline then there is a send send which is different from before because before it was just sending straight away Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's doing the unwrap wait. because it can fail. So it is kind of making sense. Yeah. Here is the taking a JSON answer with this type, awaiting it again. So we have to wait twice like before and unwrapping. Mm -hmm. If now, we want to do this, what we have to return? Instead so you of need to return a, a result. Want, You can copy probably the result, the error type that you have below in the handler. That, yeah, generic this error. One? 
But in your case, so, rather than being a unit type, it's going to be a vec of... Is yeah. this type, yes. I remember something now of Rust after years of doing it. <laughs> and now you have a double arrow there, line 22. Oh, sorry. More arrow is better, no? Maybe. And okay, now it doesn't like the JSON because we need to enable the flag JSON in request. The feature okay. flag. Okay. Which it yeah. is called, let me see. It is called, uh, what is it called? Just JSON should do it. I think it's just JSON, not set the JSON. Oh yeah, but don't trust it. Yeah, now it's a little bit up here. And that's interesting that it didn't understand. I think if you put the type explicitly on the left hand side, you don't need to put the turbo fish in line 27. I remove I will remove the fish. But what is already a vector? Why it wants? Oh, because you need to say OK. No, no, no. Just do OK and then ah. table response. Records, because we just send. Again, uh, we are not sending. We have to loop now. If there is an offset, we have to loop. If we go back to the Python code. Yes, you're right. Offset starts at zero. And these are mm -hmm. params, a query parameter. Then if there is an offset in the answer, so if that optional is uh, sum and not known, we mm -hmm. need to do another request and uh, accumulate, here we are accumulating with an extend, the records in a return type. So let's go back and do this. So our return is a vec. Let's see if he's smart enough. Yeah, I think you mm -hmm. can do that. It's going to figure out as soon as you start to do push. Something with it, yes. So, for example, now there is an extend in uh, Rust to. There might be. By the way, you need to make it. Elements. You need to make it mutable first to see. There is an extend and takes another iterator that is our write table. Response Not dot into either, I imagine dot you need to call either or into either, probably into either because you want to consume, otherwise, you're just going to get references. Okay, and then return it. Cool. Now we have to loop on top of those two, changing the offset while there is an offset. Mm -hmm. So how do we want to do in a clean way? You can probably do a because in Python I did in Python I did a white rule, but it's not the super cleanest stuff to do if you ask me. I was thinking the same. <laughs> With a break if offset is missing. Okay, mm -hmm. we can do the same. So just do loop. Loop true that there is a loop in Rust. And we we want to do the same let mute of let mute offset that start as zero. And you probably zero. need to do to, dot to string, right? Because two. Yes, it's a string to string. And here we have to pass a query parameter. How you do that? Good question. Is that query? dot query? It's a query. It's a dot query. What yes, it, it seems to be okay. Yes, it's a query parameter that wants what? Either a table Apple. or a reference to. Oh no, it wants an ar a reference to a, a, an array of tables. A reference to an array of tables with one being offset and the second one being our offset as a string what it wants i think a string should be fine actually no you can pass a reference because otherwise yeah now and we are not mutating that yet it. but we will we are mutating it now so send extend and then off set equal 
No, you, we want to. But you do... need to check first if there is an offset. So you probably want to do a match over the offset and you do either a break or reassign it, right? Yes. Nice. So we reassign or we break. Yes, and we return a ret. Now, this code should work. Why the bug is not happy? Result. Oh, uh, yeah, because, because the menu the there, you, you are not putting the question mark. You need to put the question mark at the end of line 52. Or I'm wrapped there, yeah, whichever. The bug or explode? Probably it's better to okay. put the question mark at the end of line 52. Just so if we delete that debug later, we we don't forget to unwrap. Yeah, okay, you are right. Cool. Now, by the way, quick thing because we don't want to deploy to try everything, right? We can try yeah. locally. I mean, like I, I was using... already doing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do a cargo lambda watch, I think it, let's do cargo lambda watch dash dash help. There is a way to specify environment variables. Cargo watch. A cargo lambda watch. Ah. Lambda watch. Okay, there is env vars, dash dash env vars. So you can pass here your own environment variable. And it takes key equal value. So what did we call it? Our environment variable, we called it, sorry, I have to go in the template and look at it because I forgot. Okay, we called it like this. And then you can, and we can equal, pass. Uh, uh, or you can use your own environment variable. Okay, now this should run the emulator. And now you can use in another terminal, you can do cargo lambda invoke. There you go, yeah, that should do. Okay, still building. Okay, while it's building, I think we might have an ad. But let's see what happens. I think now it's ready. What are we selling today? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I see what is trailer for Ghostbuster, another movie? Probably sponsored by Amazon. Okay, you want to try it meanwhile, or you want to wait the 20 seconds? Ooh, missing field tags. Is it possible that we don't have tags? Should it be an option? If we are failing, if we are failing the authentication. Oh yeah, maybe we should check what is the response code of the first request. But uh, it's possible that we miss tags. The answer should be no. But being this human created, the answer can be yes. And yes, there are stuff that are empty without okay. tags. So, so maybe we, we should make it make optional. Tags. I was expecting an empty array. Let me see what we have with curl. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I know I can't see that with the grab. You have to go and looking at all the file. So this was an hole in the prior. Where is it? Okay. After the alpha. 
because if there is any record that is missing the tags, so it's making us unhappy. Even if it was expecting, or is an error and we don't parse it as an error, that is the other problem. If we have for any reason an authentication error, the error is different. I can show yeah, you how exactly. it is. We need to create a type to parse it. I don't see records without tags. So it's interesting. You're basically First, assuming uh, that Airtable skips empty rows automatically, right? Otherwise, we I should see a, a, a row with an ID, but no content. Yeah. I was expecting that, exactly. But I don't see that. Anyway, what we can do is getting it as text and then dump it. Or we can check the, uh, the error code. So here, before doing... Uh, yeah, basically what, what we can do is uh, uh, before... Actually, we can split so for instance, in line 31, we are doing dot send, dot await. There, yeah, let's split these two operations. So you have the response, and then in the response, you can check the status. Um, I guess what, we, what you can do is just, um, for now, if you have a status that is uh, not 200, Mm -hmm. Do you need to do a match? Probably not. So if our table response status is not 200, you can uh, for now do that. But you need to, to await. wait here. Yeah. Okay, you want to try it meanwhile or you want to wait the 20 seconds? Oh, missing field tags. Is it possible that we don't have tags? Should it be an option? If we are failing, if we are failing the authentication. Oh yeah, maybe we should check what is the response code of the first request. But uh, is possible that we miss tags? The answer should be no. But being this human created, the answer can be yes. And yes, there are stuff that are empty without okay. tags. So, so maybe we, we should make it make optional. Tags. I was expecting an empty array. Let me see what we have with curl. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I can't see that with crap. You have to go and looking at all the file. So this was an hole in the prayer. Where is it? Okay. After the half tagetel. Let's see if there is any record that is missing the tags. So it's making us unhappy. even if it was expecting, or is a, an error and we don't parse it as an error, that is the other problem. If we have for any reason an authentication error, the error is different. I can show yeah, you how exactly. it is. We need to create a type to parse it. I don't see records without tags. So it's interesting. You're basically First, assuming uh, that Airtable skips empty rows automatically. Right. Otherwise, we should see a, a, a row with an ID, but no content. Yeah. I was expecting that, exactly. But I don't see that. Anyway, what we can do is getting it as text and then dump it. Or we can check the, uh, the error code. So here, before doing... Uh, 
Okay, yeah, basically what, what we can do is uh, uh, before, actually we can split. So for instance, in line 31, we are doing dot send, dot await. There, yeah, let's split these two operations. So you have the response and then in the response, you can check the status. Um, I guess what, we, what you can do is just um, for now, if you have a status that is uh, not 200, mm -hmm. do you need to do a match? Probably not. So if our table response status is not 200, you can uh, for now do that. But we you need, need to await. await here. Yeah, and question mark. And that another in that another couple of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here I have to create a new variable that is uh, the, um, okay, here I'm records, scheduling yeah. table response. Or just call it records. I don't know. But then Actually, inside records there will be records. No, you're right. You're right. Let's uh, let's shadow. Just because we call that table response, yeah. Uh, let's call it uh, explicitly resp. Why is response? Okay, thank you. Let's be explicit. And this is not needed anymore. And so I think I now you can also remove the turbo fish because. Or, or remove, you... or I remove yeah, the type one, one of the, one of the two. fish. Yeah, whichever you prefer. I prefer to have the type after the variable, sorry. So they make uh, sense. Uh, okay, in the meantime, this one is building. Mm -hmm. Yes, still building. So now we have to wait for it to be running and then we can try to invoke it. Okay, it's a bit slow. Uh, probably by machine. No, is uh, there is an item with empty tags, so we have to Wait. make them optional. It seems that there is a okay. option, option, which is going to be annoying because then we need to unwrap on the other side, or we need to filter. Now I think you're going to have a compilation error. Oh, error! Right. Because you are probably you trying to use yes. that optional directly. No, no, it's fine. Command killed running. See. Null. Null. What? <laughs> what oh, are no, we debugging? Wait, null is the response because we don't provide any response as a lambda. Ah. Ah, in because the... it's in the other window, the debug, yeah. right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I forgot. There are so it was just uh, some ravioli, some so we should find the tags known somewhere. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, okay. We added the check for the 200, that is good, even though we are panicking, which is not amazing, but for now it's probably fine. We can factor later. I mean, if you can't if you can't read from our table the menu, the script is done. There is nothing we can do. So probably panicking is not the worst thing to do. Yeah, but panicking is no way to recover and... from this error. At least uh, you can you could retry. Yeah, but it doesn't preserve the stack of errors. I think. So it's, I mean, it's, you're right, but if you want to make it a little bit nicer, you should return a proper error yeah. and then unwind all the errors correct. Mm, okay, you're right. And also, if this can be retried, I mean, if he's a 401, 403, give up. But if he's a 500, retry. But we are not mm -hmm. that sophisticated here. Okay, we have the menu. Now we have to do the same for the tags. Let's see how much code we can recycle.
So we have to create the type for a tag. So mm -hmm. uh, if I go in and I curl, let's go in prototype, let's take the URL for the tags that is only different in the last bit. And let's go to the curl and let's uh, paste it here. The tags are created differently. We need the tag and the sort order because the Python script is doing the max of the sort order. So we need to read both. And the structure is again the same, is mm -hmm. records and offset. But offset here is missing because there is only one page. And there is tags and sort order that we want to read from fields. So in theory, going back to Rust, this is a vector of menu item, or it could be a vector of uh, tags item. Yes. We create another a table response. Or you can do a generic. So refresh me the syntax to do a generic. What do you think is faster doing a generic? Uh, it shouldn't be too bad. So in the after I table response, you can put a curly brace and T. And then uh, rather than a, uh, sorry, no, you're right. You were at the angular places. Ah, okay. I was remembering angular. And here you do a T. And here you do a T. Then and what now, you need to change around the code? In there, I table response, you need to put line 35. You need to put the angular brackets and specify the type. Now you, okay. you you could also make this entire function generic, right? You yes, but like... and then we pass a different uh, and you URL. also pass the ID there, yeah. So you could call it, I don't know, get data from sheet or from table, yeah. whatever it's called Just... in a table. Let's say get table. Okay. Now you need to put here and, cool, uh, angular braces just after get table. No, just give me a second before I forget. Uh, yep, sorry. What is in my clipboard? So this. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. What is this code? <laughs> because Whisper wrote random stuff in my code. Get table, get table, get table, table ID is never used. Okay. Here, uh, where do we need to put the T? uh before before the um, round brackets so after get table you can put no no after the get table so in between the function yeah. name and the sure. argument yeah yeah and then you say that the type return type is t yeah now probably we'll need to add extra bounds but let's see what happens i think we'll need to say the t is okay. the serialized Okay, now why JSON complains? Because that T is not necessarily something we can deserialize from JSON. So in order to add that restriction. But also how it knows that is a menu item because we are not telling that in any point. You'll need to also tell it there in line 56. So yeah, and to do that, you also need to put the column column there, the turbo fish. Okay, that works, but now still JSON is gonna complain because it's basically saying the serialize this type that can be literally anything from JSON. So we basically mm. need to say okay. the T in line 22, where you have the T there, you can put column and then space the serialize. So this is basically saying not any T, but only T's that are deserializable. Why it doesn't like that? Uh, Missing lifetime. How do we fix this? Consider making the bound lifetime generic with an A. Can you add uh, the serialize plus tick, the back tick, yeah, uh, underscore? Back? No, no, that, that, sorry, that's the correct one. And remove the A. Does that work? No. 
because if you introduce a, we also need to do quote um, tick a before the t, because tick a is going to be another generic, and then put a comma between the two. Is that going to make it happy? I'm not sure that the, we can put this plus tk there, to be honest. Okay, so we need to say deserialize. It's uh, okay, that, that, that should work. Remove the plus. Okay, and now here we have to add the table. Uh, use a format. Yes. It's still not, not happy down there. Bah, what the fuck I wrote. Format. Where is not happy? Add the serial. Oh, the serial lines. Okay, try to remove the TK. There from line 22. Where? There would just put an underscore, TK underscore. And then remove the A from the beginning there is that gonna work no it wants to be explicit okay let's do the explicit thing but then somehow we need to say that there is a reference to a oh that menu url you need to put a reference because otherwise it's going to consume your url the first time you you do the loop It's not general enough. Must implement the serialized to zero for any lifetime. That's interesting. Okay, we need to research there. The serialized is not general enough. Must implement the serialized zero for a lifetime. Is that what implementing lifetime one? Okay, in the meantime, I will just create the struct for I the tags. I think there might be a simpler way. So there is mm -hmm. another trait that is called deserialize owned. Just a second, the thing fighting with. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be spell that wants to write code for me. You are not going to have empty rows there, right? We don't have, but who knows? <laughs> okay. And tag is a string, it's not a vector, so it's just a string. Makes sense. Okay, and for the rest, it's called fields. We don't care about the ID. And now let's go back to our problem with the air table lifetime. What I also can do is and we have to take the other string from the Python prototype. The one for the tags is this one. Okay, in the meantime that I did some boilerplate that we needed, this is tags. Okay. okay. Have you found so a solution for this? One guy? possible solution is that rather than saying the serialize in line 33, there is mm -hmm. another thing that is called the serialize owned, which I think makes a clone, so it doesn't try to keep references. And then I think you can get rid, rid of lifetimes, but also and I think we need to... You probably need to import it. Conserve uh, always no. It doesn't autocomplete. So if you if you click on the error. You are so fancy. Fix. 
Sad, the, that, that's the one, they, yeah. they serialize on it. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, under a sub package. Okay, now is it happy? Is that enough? It's not complaining anymore. So what's the difference for this trait? I think the this is a little bit more um, eager, so to speak. I think it just makes a clone of the original data. So for instance, if you have string references, it's not going to keep the reference, but it's just going to locate a new string. So that's why you don't have to deal with lifetimes. But it makes mm. our life a little bit easier here with generics. Yeah. OK, now. If this works, I could debug. So let's make underline menu because we are not using it for now. But what we can do is doing dbg exclamation mark tags. And we should see. Let's run it. Cargo Lambda invoke. Oh, it's still building. What happens if I invoke while this building is waiting? I think it's uh, pending, yeah. Okay, now it's running. Okay, now we have the execution and we have our tags item with tags item field, digest TV, and sort order, ravioli, pasta, and so on for the menu. Cool. Now we have our two objects, our two vectors. Mm -hmm. What was the Python prototype doing? Do we want do we want to go on or what do you want to do, Luciano? I think we are close to one hour and a half, so probably we can stop it there. But let's do a super quick recap of what we did and what we need to do next. Yeah. Right? Sure. So what we did, we still have to commit, so it's easy to see. We added this parameter. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he thinks that we changed something. Probably here. just formatting. Oh, yeah, remove so some at slash at the end. Oh, you added. OK, perfect. perfect. Yeah. And then we added this environment variable taken from the parameter. So this name should match this name. And we pass it as an environment variable to our Lambda. Mm -hmm. Right. Then yes. we added serde and request with this uh, batch, uh, bunch of stuff here to be able to compile a request. Otherwise, it was not possible. And also to be able to Correct. use the dot JSON format, the dot JSON function, mm -hmm. to deserialize directly the body into a struct of our choice. Yeah. Then in the main Rust code, we added reading the environment variable that we set in the template. We read it, then we created the get table with this generic, or we get the menus, or we get tags. Mm -hmm. We pass the API key, and we pass the different table ID. This function, well, we created all the types that we need to map the JSON answer of our table, generalizing this one so it can be used for both of them. Then we created the function itself that is accepting a generic, is taking the two parameters, is returning a result of a vector of t, taking, creating the URL, making the client, uh, preparing the accumulator, uh, starting with a no set of zero, doing the request with authorization and our offset, sending, awaiting, checking for the response code, taking the response as a JSON, extended return variable with the records from mm -hmm. the Airtable response. If there is, if there isn't an offset, it breaks. If there is an offset, it overrides the offset variable that is mutable with that one and goes on until there are pages. In the end, it returns an OK. And we also showed, again, how to do a watch passing a parameter. And, and how to, to deploy with a parameter. And now to deploy with a parameter that is somewhere in my history. The parameters override. If, yeah, parameters override with whatever. The other thing I wanted to mention cool. is that so next time we'll need to do the logic to update. If we yeah. find new tags, we need to update the table of tags. Another yes. thing we, we can do, maybe you can put a to do. So line 60. 
967 and 68. We are doing this sequentially, but it doesn't have to be. We can do that mm -hmm. concurrently. Ah, that is true. Which could be an interesting uh, Tokyo thing to see how do you combine two async function. So something like a promise.all in JavaScript, right? Yeah. And um, another thing we can do, I think in Serdi, I don't remember exactly the syntax, but there is a way to avoid too much nesting. So you can say, for instance, the tags, right? We have an additional level of nesting. We have mm -hmm. fields and then tags, but then it's going to, going to be one yes. tag, right? So I think yes, there is a way to just one say- in one sort order. Exactly, move both the tag and the sort order up. Mm, and we create only one structure and not two. Exactly, So, but I don't remember exactly the syntax. Same, so we, uh, same for here? Probably we can do the same there as well, yeah. Okay, but this time, so uh, let me add that to do. Uh, use CRD to only have one struct one year and one year okay cool so shall we wrap cool. up so we can call it a day yeah okay so thanks everyone for being here as usual you can find all the recordings on youtube we'll put the link there in the chat just give me a sec and we will continue the stream. We join a stream every Monday about 6 p.m. GMT. So we should be doing that next Monday as well, but keep following us yeah. on Twitter for any update. Twitter, LinkedIn, Twitch. So depending on where you're watching this, make sure you follow us everywhere. And I think that's everything. So we'll see you the next yeah, time. Yeah, everything for today. Bye. Bye.